now. All right. There we go. Okay, so I did mention this a little bit, but again, uh, we have our boutique program here, one on one uh, mentorship. Um, we also have, um, you know, a small class size. So that's really something special. Of course, we've got all of our resources and I'll drop those in the chat one more time. So everyone's got them. Oh, that did not copy. Okay. So what is gamification? So um, I'm curious, what do you guys think gamification is? Um, feel free to drop what, what your guys' perception of it is or how you would define it. But the widely accepted de uh, definition or uh, yeah, definition of gamification is essentially the addition of game elements to non-game activities. So um, things like having badges or yeah, adding elements of gaming, badges or scores or uh, points, things like that, essentially adding those to activities that are not games. So we see that not just in UX, we see that um, in marketing. So like loyalty programs, like Starbucks has a loyalty program that they have and you get to earn points. And then by earning points, you win prizes. So, um, you know, winning something is part of gamification as well. And thinking back to McDonald's uh, Monopoly, that's a way that they gamified it as well. We also have it in fitness. So we have, um, you know, how, if you've got an Apple watch or any other kind of fitness tracker, it's tracking your daily steps or walking or your exercise. And that's another element. And then also winning things like medals and awards. That's also gamification. Looking at education, I think a big a uh, category for gamification is education. As we all know, online and virtual learning is very challenging. Um, I'm not sure how many of you guys have family members or maybe you have a sibling or, or maybe you have kids that yourself that are experiencing online learning. So uh, gamification is just a way to help keep people motivated. Uh, hiding the cursors. Let me see if that is possible. If somebody knows how to do that. I would be happy to take that advice. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way to do that. Uh, but if you know the way, just point me uh, or let me know how to do that and I'll go ahead and um, change that. So the next area of gamification is Reddit. Reddit is like phenomenal at gamification. And I think they're one of the companies that early on really just nailed it. Yeah, I can absolutely go ahead and hide that. Um, I'm gonna not keep it in present mode because I'm moving these through the slides pretty quick, but that's a good tip to do as well. Um, and just cause we'll be working on a problem in just a minute. Um, okay, so yeah, so Reddit's a really good one. Asana has a unicorn. So what is the psychology behind gamification? So games motivate us to do things essentially, like sports are a way of staying fit. Uh, chess um, helps educate uh, folks on military strategy. And then video games allow people to play as their ideal self. So that's something that um, that is really helpful to like to live out a core need. So basically, 
gamification is this combination of fun and engagement, a uh, core need, and then getting things done. And Heather has a tip here. Let me bring up the UI again. Click on the view settings. Perfect, thank you, that's awesome. All right, thank you, Heather, for that uh, little tip there. Okay, so anyway, so fun and engagement, combine that with a core need, and then it helps motivate to get things done. So that's essentially the, the core purpose or core drive of um, having gamification in software. Um, I'm just gonna quickly go into this. Diving a little bit deeper, we have these core needs and these core needs combined with uh, gamification principles help to create uh, products that are um, motivating to use and encouraging to use. So, you know, having a sense of meaning or accomplishment, uh, social influence, also uh, unpredictability and avoidance. Those are all just a few principles there. And you can dive a little bit deeper into this if you'd like, but these are just all of the core drives and like different gaming principles that might apply to them. A few more gamification elements here. So we have rules and goals, strategies, um, badges, a few of the things that I've already mentioned. And then if you click on the link here, you'll find even more uh, gamification like different methods of gamification. So I thought it'd be really fun during this session to go ahead and jump in and try to solve a hypothetical problem and um, see if we can gamify it a little bit. We are working with, a, we're, we, I just have a screenshot of a file, but we're gonna just focus on the gamification elements rather than like problem solving the actual, you know, full picture design. So the product that I picked for this is called Wave Apps. It is an invoicing and accounting software, kind of like QuickBooks, but a little bit newer of a startup. And so let's say that they're working to expedite the invoicing process and they want to differentiate their product by helping the customers get paid faster than other invoicing software. So that's kind of our little problem statement there. So here I showed a screenshot of, um, of what an email looks like coming from an invoice to a the per, like to their client. So say I sent out an invoice to my client. This is the client's perspective here. And then here is a bit of a screenshot of what it would look like when I click on the invoice. So as we can see here, we've got a test business uh, with a test invoice. We've got options to pay. And then we've also got, um, we got our actual invoice with everything described underneath and uh, just nothing really at the footer, nothing important um, in terms of design. Okay, so that's kind of what we're going to be looking at. Like, what are some things that we could add to the screen? Or maybe if there are some things to rearrange, but how might we gamify this so that other companies um, will pay us faster? Okay, so our question here is how might we design an invoicing screen that helps Wave Apps clients get paid faster than other invoicing software? Some of the questions that I was thinking about. Um, some of the questions that I was thinking about as I was working through this problem or just thinking about this problem is where does the delay occur? Is the delay from the customer side or the payment side? So do I take a long time to make an invoice and therefore that invoice is sent to the customer really late and then I get paid late? Or does the customer see my invoice and they just simply, um, they simply, they are the reason that there's a delay in a payment. That's something that I might want to think about. Uh, something else I thought about is even though the payment options are listed, why might customers still have delays in payment? So the way that this page is designed right now, like this is pretty straightforward. 
but yet there's people that are still not getting their payment right away. So this is where gamification might be really important to try to encourage uh, the customer who's receiving this invoice to pay it quickly. Okay, some other questions I thought, why might someone not pay right away? And where can we add game gamification effectively? Yeah, so there might be a mismatch in payment system. Other companies will have their own schedules and accounting to send out payments totally, That's and that's fair. So um, maybe this is where we kind of have to think about how might we redesign this so that it sends out earlier so we can get paid on our preferred payment time or something like that. I think the other thing too is for the sake of this problem, I would want to, I think I would want to focus on users that are more small business or freelancers. Um, because if a freelancer is working with a small business, they're not going to be quite as ex established as like a big company that is on a set payment schedule, a small business is going to be able to pay you faster if, um, you know, if their systems are not quite as rigid as a more established company. All right, let me see what other ideas we had. Rewards for submitting invoices in 24 hours. That's a great idea. What kind of rewards do you think that would be helpful here? If I'm a freelancer, I don't necessarily want to lose potential money by like offering a discount. So what kind of rewards might we offer um, for paying within 24 hours? Maybe it would be a smaller credit percentage charge. So typically when you're working with invoicing software, there's a percentage that's charged. Um, if you use like a credit card, maybe it's just a slightly smaller percent, but that's my, that smaller percent might be worth it. After achieving a couple of rewards, you get a free month of service. Hmm. Think about it. I, and that, that's like a interesting possible solution. I think we might be able to like work through a solution that makes sense starting at this point. Um, but think about it from the perspective of like being a freelancer or a small business or something like that. Um, I, I like offering a free month of service is a big ask for a smaller business or um, a freelancer. So maybe, maybe we offer an additional additional product or just service. I also want to think about um, like an idea I had earlier today is like this, what if we showed their previous invoices and maybe like gamified it by making it into some sort of like percentage. So I'm going to hit R here. Okay. And see if I can draw what I mean. So here, I'm gonna like think about, it. maybe this kind of goes off the screen and we see like all of the previously paid invoices. within 24 hours. And so that kind of encourages maybe a streak to build. And a streak is a principle of gamification. So um, I'm going to italicize that so that's a little bit more discreet. So uh, fun visual feedback when you complete a field. Yes, that's a fun one. So I'm going to add that to the list. Okay, and uh, there's no clear to call to action on the email. 
So, or no priority fraction, why those two buttons are in two different formats, like they're active and passive since they're both payment, page order is broken, uh, page is overall confusing. So I, I do think there's a purpose here because um, this software, Wave Apps, intentionally created this button to be blue. Why do you guys think that Wave Apps created this button to be blue? I have a theory for my thinking, but I'm kind of curious what you guys think. 5% off next purchase. Yeah, I think that's a little bit more reasonable than maybe a month of service. And that's something that might be a little bit more, um, more of a motivator. Exactly, like a sticker. Okay, but let's focus on specifically like the design. So these are all things that the small business might offer. So maybe like if I'm a freelancer, it might say in my contract, if you pay within 24 hours, I'll give you this extra bonus. So that is gamification, but let's, let's see if there's any ideas that are specific to like the design here and how we think through the actual UX. A reduced tra transaction fee. Yeah, that's a good one. Get announcements of ahead of other people. Oh, I'm curious, what do you mean that by that? Um, can you elaborate on that one a little bit? Yes, yeah, so late payment fees. Yes, that's typically a thing, but we that's usually like if you're past the due date, but we want them to pay as soon as possible. So our goal isn't to get them to pay on the due date. Our goal is to get them to pay like as soon as possible. Okay, so an uh, interesting one here, a countdown, like a reverse progress bar, and even you can set achievements for the time periods payments took place early pay or right on time. Yeah, so you can do badges. Okay, so let's do that. I think badges are, people universally love them. And maybe that's where we can kind of use some bonus stuff. So I'm hitting O to make some circles. going to make that white so we can see um, that a little bit better. Yeah, we could, uh, we could actually like a progress bar is an interesting one. Um, let's see. Okay, so it does, where do we see whether it's, so it just automatically just says uh, like, how would you like to pay? But we don't have anything that says like um, paid or not paid. And maybe that's what we need to see. Um, in bigger letters. So that almost like uh, it bothers us. And it encourages us to, to switch it to paid so that it turns maybe green. So make it red right now. You know, maybe not that big, but, um, but something that's red. Okay, so let's go back to this question that we had about these buttons. Why is one of them blue versus the other one is more of a neutral or inactive? Um, so my theory is whenever we have UX design, we also have to consider like business. Uh, UX design is not like, it, it, it is for the people, but it would like whatever features we implement for the people are not gonna be a priority for the business unless the business benefits from it somehow as well. So my theory here is it it links the credit card first because Wave Apps has a higher percentage that they take from credit cards. Um, this is just something that I know because I personally use it, but let me go ahead. So the fee, I believe, it's something like, I want to say it's like 3%. So that means for every time that someone pays with a credit card, 
uh, Wave Apps is getting 3% of that payment. Um, on the other hand, for banks, they're only taking 1%. So let me just update that. So my theory is they want to default to this credit card and they want people who are paying invoices to use this because they get a big, bigger cut. That's, that's my, um, yep, preferred payment option. Exactly, exactly. Um, both of these do charge money. It's just, this is the better option. And, and Cindy has it right too, exactly. So because they've made it blue, it stands out. And um, most people looking at this might just go there because it seems like the easier option, but it doesn't necessarily benefit the freelancer. Increase the size of the due date. That's a good one. Yeah, because this one is quite small. So, okay, how about the badges you receive will add up and then the platform gives cross-marketing recommending your service to other clients. Interesting. I think there's an idea there. So let's see if we can work through it a little bit. So uh, badges add up and then cross-marketing. What if, because the cross-marketing would have to benefit the client that's paying. What if, um, like, what if for the client, X amount of badges, like, unlocks some sort of bonus features? Like, not features. Uh, I don't think it would be features, but some sort of bonus. Like, what would a client, like, what would a uh, small business want to receive? Like, maybe they want to receive network discounts. Um, what else would they want to receive? I'll have to think on that. But um, that's a good idea. Like, like the more that the more badges that a client has that it unlocks certain features or certain um, advantages or certain extra things for them. Maybe they get some sort of templates or products. We talked about that a little bit. Um, yeah, I'll keep thinking on that one. A QR code. Yeah, that's a good one. Alex says he likes uh, Jules iteration on the point system. Okay, yeah, that's a that's an awesome one. So I think what I would do here, so let's just like go along with this badges idea, um, which we, we're just wireframing right now, but we can go ahead um, and keep going. So actually I wanna just make those a little bit bigger. So if you hit the circle and then hit shift, it'll select both. And then if you hit option, you can drag and create more circles. And let's just say we have a button. Gonna make it white and then round the edges. And actually I'm gonna make it not white. I'm gonna make it a light gray because I want it to look like it's not active right now and you can't use it just yet. And maybe I do that with a few of the badges. It's like maybe you just have to get the first set of badges before you can even like go into these more advanced badges. Um, we need points, right? Like what else do we need on these badges? We need points. So let's just say you could earn some sort of arbitrary number, whatever we decide. I 
and then that's going to have that inside the badge. And I'm just going to draw my idea actually really quick because uh, maybe I can do this. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to make a circle. And the way that I want it to do, okay. So if you see, if you see a circle, you can take this, click this little arc button here, and then it brings it into an arc. So I kind of want it to look like it's filling up and then you can change the radius. So the way that I'm thinking about it is this would kind of fill up as you gain points. And then we'd have like the actual icon in the center. So just like that. And then this would be that custom badge icon. Fun names. Oh yeah, we should name it. That's a good one. So like maybe, I don't know, you guys, I, I wanna hear your ideas for names. Let, let's, um, I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. See what you guys can come up with. We'll just start like Billy Payer, just a basic one to start. So my scale is a little bit off here, I think. Like this might be need to be expanded. As you can see, like my text is a little bit too big. So I'm looking at this. I might just need to go a little smaller. Prompt penny. <laughs> All right, we'll do that. Prompt penny. I know there's a few other ones in there that I saw earlier. All right. Oops. Now for the icons, like that is something that you can, depending on your organization or, or how skilled you are, or um, depending on the context, you could either look online and see if you could find some cool badges. Um, you can get some like free icons online, or you could try to, um, <laughs> you could try to create your own which I'm not gonna do right now because it's a little bit more technical. All right, business on steroids. <laughs> We're getting real crafty here, I love it. Okay. Um, so now we have these like different badges here that could earn points and um, kind of see the status. How might we play, look, let's look at some of our ideas. Let's see what kind of principles maybe would make sense here. A leaderboard. Now that's an interesting uh, like um, perspective, right? I don't know if this would work, but let's let's explore that idea a little bit. Okay, so if we had a leaderboard, yeah, that that's exactly what I'm thinking. That I'm thinking. Okay, leaderboard. So, Kasia, you have exactly the right idea. You are in the top five percent of pairs. Or like maybe it's even like something like feel good, like. You are like, let's say if I'm, if this is my bonus, um, like, I, I don't know if this would work. This is something that you might have to like, um, do some testing on, but like maybe saying like you're in Alona's or who, like whoever's business top clients, maybe that might make somebody feel good right away and feel like, oh, okay, I love our relationship. I wanna make sure this person is paid. So really, really awesome direction here. What if when a business signs on for the first time, so, so the invoice is sent, Charity donation, that's a good one for the badges, I think. Um, 
Okay, so an invoice is sent. Now, I don't know if this would work. We're just exploring ideas here. Um, the business gets to choose their account name. Because I think if we were going to create a leaderboard, I wouldn't, I, I think for privacy sake, like businesses probably wouldn't want their names on it. So they could have like a character name. Maybe they get to choose a character. Kind of like Netflix accounts. So this could be like a fun character. And they can also maybe rename the title. The reason I don't know if this would work is because um, it might hinder somebody from getting paid right away if they have an extra setup. So maybe we make this like the last step. Maybe they go to click to pay for the first time use. Um, and then they'll go into choosing a character at the end. So that way they can at least get through the payment. And then for the next time, they'll have like a little character. And then ranking in the leaderboard. Um, what if you were in the low 5%, would you want to do something like you may do a mascot from Duolingo sad, or is that counterproductive? Huh, that is interesting. So I don't know if I would do that exactly, but that's an interesting perspective. Like maybe like, like let's think of a couple of different iterations of that. So um, I, I would make it like, hmm. I would try to think about it in the, like, have you guys ever been in a fight and uh, it's really easy to start like blaming another person or just going at another person, but a lot of, <laughs> a lot of self-help and therapy or whatever, they always say like, okay, if you can say, I feel like this way, blah, blah, blah. So what if we kind of try to say like, Alona, like, uh, I'm trying to think about how to say this. Um, like basically, basically this is what I'm trying to say, but not in this way. Be a good client. Pay Alona sooner. Okay. <laughs> so um, kind of like in maybe tips on how to be a better client. Um, maybe you could say fast payments uh, help us get started on the next project sooner. <laughs> if you pay now, yes. Alona will secretly, Alona will not secretly, just kidding, um, secretly, do a happy dance. Um, and maybe this is where GIFs could be really fun. So like, this could be a GIF. And like just a really fun um, GIF. Yeah, I do, uh, Jules, I have the same kind of like thoughts, like do they really wanna spend time on a character? And this is where I'd be curious to do like a little bit of testing. Cause I think it's one of those things that sometimes in UX uh, you'll ask people like, oh, well, well, let me give you this example. Um, if you want to know where to place a bench in a park, uh, you might go to a, person walking the park and ask him, hey, would you sit on this bench if it's here? Or would you, um, where do you want this bench? Uh, but you're not really asking the right question. The question is, 
where do you want to rest? Where do you want to sit? And somebody might want to sit on the grass, but you can't really put a bench in the middle of the grass. Um, so it's just a matter of like asking the right question. So if I'm doing some testing here, I wouldn't necessarily ask a business, do you want to choose a character? Um, or like something like that. But I would be curious, like, just to see if they actually interact with it and actually if that's something that they do. Um, you know, we don't like even creating a Reddit account or creating any kind of other accounts. Like um, most people, like they might ignore that or some people might ignore that, but some people might be like, just take the two seconds to do that. And it might be a little bit fun. Christine has, that is an awesome idea. I love that. So like kind of like a little, um, maybe this can like shake, animate and shake or a uh, little like character becomes happy. Like you said, yeah. So like, um, maybe it's like a character that pops up behind the, okay, let's see if I can do this again. Um, Oops. Okay. What am I doing wrong? Where's my arc button? Okay. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is basically this is like a character. Okay. Now I want to figure this out. Nope. Okay. This is not working for me. Oh. Oh, I think, okay, um, hold on. I am gonna get this. No, cause I haven't selected that. All right, anyway, my point is it'd be like, maybe like it's like something that pops up behind the button um, and kind of like leans over it, kind of like leaning over a fence or like, what if it's like a little dog that is like hopping over it? I don't know, it could be anything. Okay, so we can do a comparison against somebody's last payment or pay their payment history. So like, see if you can beat, beat your average basically. And like, it could be a big number, Let's say the average days is, let's say it's 10 days. And then like we have something here that kind of encourages them. Uh, maybe it's not even like just maybe it's as simple as your average payment or not payment, um, time to pay. We'd have to work on the wording there, but maybe that's like something, oops, like up top somewhere. Probably make this a little smaller, but the idea is there. And then this is where we could see like, uh, maybe instead of previously paid invoices, like um, we see like average or like a payment history. And then like the ones that are paid within 24 hours have like a special um, streak. So like they would just be checked. So that way, like this would encourage the client to like kind of see how many they can fill up. So let's just say this is invoice. Oh. 
one. And then we have like a bunch of invoices that weren't paid within 24 hours. It's so like that would kind of hopefully encourage payment. So uh, Cassia says, going back to the idea of socialization, how about tapping into emotions? What would make me want to pay faster? I'm thinking uh, to do to do my bit to support a small business. Yeah, how how could we show that? Like maybe um, we don't, I don't want to get too like charity ish, but there are ways to do that. Um, Also, I think maybe like what what could be a boundary that's preventing somebody from paying? Like maybe someone's not paying because they can't pay the full amount and they need to pay, they need to wait to pay the full amount. So maybe we can like break up payments because paying $500 is a little bit too much. Yeah, just a heads up. If anybody says that to you, that's not a reason not to get paid. Um, so, but yeah, they, that they sometimes have to wait till they get paid by somebody else. However, like that shouldn't be your responsibility, but yes, maybe it'll help to break up, uh, payments in that case. Like, I like that idea going back to socialization. Um, so in terms of like payment amounts, so like what if there's like a progress bar? Oh, that is not a pretty, let's do a line instead. So hit L, like a progress bar up top. And I'm gonna, this is gonna be the last idea I'll work on and then we'll wrap up. Uh, let's do some gray to show like the amount that's been paid. And maybe that'll like give people the idea of like, hey, uh, like you don't have to pay this all at once. You could pay a portion of it. Yeah, you could do an incentive. Um, uh, you can do an incentive for like paying in full for sure. Uh, would it be too brutal if we stop the client to place another order until they finish paying for the first product? Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Uh, I'll just use my mic to make it sure. easier. Uh, essentially, um, not the client, let's say I place an order through an illustrator to do a design branding, I'm not allowed to place another order until the first invoice is paid. Which, now that I say it out loud, that sounds even more brutal. Maybe we should jump to that. Okay, I see what you mean. So like, um, it, yeah, so like, for example, some people have a pretty like um, fluid freelancing structure. So they might just keep working until the next invoice, but you're saying like, you have to place a specific order to work on projects for the next month, right? Yeah, yeah, that that's a tricky one. Um, I think it might be a little bit like difficult for <laughs> clients to follow that. Um, maybe it's not mean, but it's just a little bit like, huh, so every time we're gonna have like 15 days, I, I think that might work more if it's like a late payment. Okay, you guys, like, uh, I'm going to wrap up here. Thank you for joining me. I hope you guys had fun. That I had a lot of fun with that one. Uh, gamification is a really fun concept. But, you know, we do have to think about, like, um, what people are trying to accomplish. And then I think the other key takeaway here is, like, sometimes like, a person's not going to say, I want this to be gamified or I want this type of gamification. Um, users aren't going to necessarily say that all the time. But then this is where we look at their behaviors and see if it's actually helping and if it's actually working. Um, let me go ahead and share. I have some links for further learning if you're interested. So those are just some more resources about gamification. 
and then I'll share our usual webinar links. If you guys have any more questions, I'm going to stay on for like five minutes to uh, answer any other questions. And then I want to see if anybody was on the playground. Not today. Okay. Yeah, so um, super fun, you guys. I think the ones that stick out the most to me are um, this payment history. I like the average time to pay and the badges, I think, are some really interesting ideas here. Actually, there's a lot of good ones. We could probably make this whole like uh, page like a video game. Links didn't come through. Uh, which ones did you not see? The further learning? Okay, let me send those again. Oh, sorry about that. I think I sent it to the wrong room. There we go. Did you guys get that now? All right, I'm gonna stop recording and then just hang out for a little bit.